Hey, it's Brian here from uh, quantlabs.net. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the lessons that I'm learning over the last couple of weeks. I'm just doing a full cycle, like everything's just coming back together over the last two years. So I'm going to talk about the lessons learned from the last two years, where we're at, where we're going, and a lot of the challenges I'm having <clears throat> with open source training platforms, closed source or commercial uh, training platforms, and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, yesterday, uh, if, for those that don't know, well, my friend from London, the, I call him the London Quant, that's who you knew him as, he's easily the most accomplished developer slash trader out there. Um, this guy has now been uh, out there for a couple of months, uh, launching his own prop shop slash small fun. Um, he's doing extremely, extremely well. Now, I've, I've through my meetups, through my webinars, the whole nine yards, I have seen a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot of platforms, a lot of uh, traders, uh, people uh, from the world of IT trying to develop their own platforms, uh, rolling their own, da 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 da. Um, here's a couple of things I can tell you uh, from my experience thus far. Um, traders that know programming, uh, that worked, I don't know, two, three years on a platform that they've developed and they roll their own solution. Uh, there becomes over time most likely some kind of deficiency in the software that they're developing and, be, and they hit various uh, walls Ver like it could be just the, the wrong database it could be anything but major now when they're faced with this dilemma they hit a real uh, situation which is kind of concerning for them that they know that their solution is going to have a limitation but they're so heavily tied back to their development, uh, let's say over the last few years, that they're not willing to throw away what they've developed or one component of it and replace it with something else. So that's one uh, thing I'm noticing. Second, when it comes to the trading platforms, now there's both the commercial and the open source. Um, the commercial, learning from my quant of a friend in London, who I highly respect, and he's easily the only guy I really listen to now. Uh, he's the best of the best at what he does. Um, he's proven based upon um, the the charts that I've seen uh, on on his on his performance. Blah 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 blah. Everybody else is secondary to that um, because they're just everything from that is all theoretical. But they're not really trading live money. They haven't gotten to that point, and even if they have, they haven't even gotten to the point where they're profitable and they're not profitable in a lucrative way, whereas this guy is. So again, he's the only guy I listen to. So it comes down to trading platforms and what you can and what you can not do with them. Essentially, um, he's only trading on tick and minute data. He used to trade on 5, 50 minute and hourly frequency. He threw all that out and only trading on uh, tick and minute. Now the thing is, is if it's tick or minute, basically, What's happening is there's so many opportunities in that such short time frame. Um, some of the opportunities can be worth, I don't know, fifty to one hundred fifty thousand dollars in such a short period of time, depending upon your capital and your obviously your leverage, and that short amount of time. So for those that are more day traders or more retail traders, they're they're moving at a too slow a pace. It's not automated. I mean, they're making money. That's fine, but. You really can't scale that, obviously. Uh, when you automate, you can scale it, and you can really scale it when you're at one minute and uh, tick data. So because of that, the point is, it doesn't matter your strategy. Um, that's secondary. What matters, and I mentioned this before in another video, is co your computer science skills or your programming skills are essential here. Um, what you need to do is to make sure you have... Uh, an internal in-memory tick database. Now, the one I'm looking at and I have looked at is NoSQL. I've looked at uh, Redis and now I'm, I'm pretty well, well, I'm, I'm moving forward with uh, MongoDB uh, for Windows. Um, and the other thing is on the technology front, the Java versus the .NET for, for uh, just, just in terms of uh, speed and research and just more advanced things that you can do, it's definitely in .NET and C Sharp. He showed me some stuff that blows my mind that I don't, I'm, probably you could do in Java, but um, it's just the Microsoft uh, research teams have really brought about some really neat stuff that I never knew about.
uh, for for financial trading. Um, so again, that's my plan of action is to do obviously Mongo with C sharp, some C plus plus. So uh, that's kind of what where we're at now. Yesterday, I put up a video on two things, and that brings me to the commercial and the open source trading pl platforms. First. Open source trading platforms in Java are just, there's no community, there's no support, there's no documentation, so throw away that. The only one left that's really viable is TradeLink. I still think it's the number one trading platform out there. My dilemma is now trying to develop a real world strategy in TradeLink uh, now is, is, is impossible. I've spent two weeks trying to figure it out using all the API documentation, and it's really uh, uh, scant. It's just there's nothing. I mean, there are some little tiny examples, but it's really hard to build it, to, uh, you know, for certain things like for stop loss, trail stops. It can be done. I just don't see examples of it. So again, I throw out that idea. Now with TradeLink itself, that's just the API, the, the components. And then there's Glean. Now I played with Glean. I don't get Glean. Again, it's the same concept where I don't understand Glean. It's just not a slick product. It's not prime time for the the fees that are, are expected to be paid out for this product using the back end of uh, all the TradeLink uh, components. Um, it's very expensive, and it's not proven, uh, and the support again not proven. Um, and I'm sure it's it's fine. It's good, but I'm not really willing to risk um, my uh, money or capital on a platform like that with, with this type of arrangement. Then that, that's open source. And then there's closed source. You've, you've heard me go on about Deltix and yeah, MetaTrader, all that, whatever. But Deltix is an interesting one. I love Deltix. It's very powerful. Um, it's a very expensive product if you can afford it. Um, and uh, it's just something that I would definitely consider um, by my membership is in the same boat as I am. Uh, Deltix is really for a multi-million dollar operation and uh, I am not that. I mean look around. I have a little plot, a flower pot in the back. You don't see me driving Ferraris and uh, being able to afford a high, highly expensive cocaine addiction. <laughs> I don't take drugs anyway. So Deltix is really unfortunately not an option. Um, yeah, if just something happens, you're, you're, you're SOL, and you're SOL bad. Um, then yesterday I put up op new options using MATLAB. Now, again, MATLAB and R, I don't want to get into that. I just prefer MATLAB. Code generation is where it's at. That's native to the language I want to be in, and that's important. That's in C or C++. Or if I want to go into HDL using the FPGA for high-frequency trading, ultra-low latency, I have that as an option. That's why I like my MATLAB. So... Um, that brings me to where do we go? Okay, so I could use MATLAB for trading, for execution. There, like the 2013A is kind of evolving towards that. Um, there's a couple of concerns and issues I have with that. There's a product called IB MATLAB, which looks good, probably does a job, um, but I don't know if I'm going to be using interactive brokers. Um, so, uh, you know, you'd be tied back to the IB. And um, I've put up a couple of concerns about IB last week. So, as it stands right now, uh, to use the product, you need to have uh, a, not a demo account, but a live account registered with IB. So that means you got to fork out ten thousand dollars, right? No go. Uh, I'm not willing to do that at this point. So, you know, I guess that option is not really viable. Um, also with MATLAB, you can use trading technologies with their trading uh, toolbox, fine, but then you're really limited only to the uh, futures, as far as I know, in Forex, so you're not getting the full, all the assets you want to trade with, with trading technologies X Trader. Uh, there's also the Bloomberg service, but that's very, 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 very expensive, like five grand a month, so you're back to the Delta issue. Uh, so you see where I'm going with this. Um, so, talking to this quant guy out of London, my friend, he's been he's been hammering on me for months on this. Roll your own, write your own solution. And I go, well, yeah, but I don't have the time to uh, waste to well not waste, but to 
to get to my head, my, wrap my head around. So he showed me some stuff, and that's where I'm at now. I'm throwing away all these platforms. I'm throwing away all these uh, third-party connectors or whatever. So I'm looking at doing MongoDB as my tick database because it's open source and I can do all the fancy stuff. And it's in memory. Uh, obviously, I'm using IQ feed for my data provider because it's affordable. And uh, there's an API license you can get. They have an example in there which I really like uh, for Java, which will literally stream whatever you're watching into wherever. It's, it's a console app. So I can easily um, take what I'm streaming and stream it into my Mongo database, right? So that's what I'm planning to do to get everything into the Mongo database. Now, if you haven't seen Mongo and the capabilities of it and where it's at now in this, I think, 2.4 version, uh, it looks pretty good. Um, can do some cool um, event processing and stuff like that. So I'm kind of leaning towards that. Um, I did talk to my quant about these another alternative commercial options, like using SQL Server Stream Insight. Or uh, another one, another guy I mentioned was Oracle CEP. And this is CEP is complex event processing. Um, those are no good because you're losing still critical, critical cycles to get data, get the database engine to do something, and then bring back a result. So those extra cycles are really eaten and, and, and not enabling you to uh, take full advantage of tick data because you're you're still chewing up. A processor to do something on the database engine side, but with Mongo, pretty well eliminates a lot of that. That's why, um, from what I just researched, over half of all the web startups out there, and there's a lot of them, half are using MongoDB. So that's how powerful MongoDB is as an open source a NoSQL database solution and can be used as a TIC database, uh, no different than a KDB, which is again very expensive. So I'm looking at that now. My broker, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm unfortunately stuck in Canada, so I have very limited options. And again, even if I was in the States or in England, again, capital requirements are like 50000 100000 um, So again, I'm not really able to uh, go out and work with a light speed or a real take. All these um, brokers are very, very expensive. And for the little guy like me, including my membership, it's, it's just not doable. So again comes back to what I originally envisioned, IT feed for the data provider, which is very affordable. It's like 100 bucks, 150, two, even 200 bucks a month is, 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 is doable. <clears throat> and the other one is uh, interactive brokers as the broker. Again, in Canada, that's all I have. That's, that's, that's it. IB is the only one for automated trading that's affordable and that has the most amount of minimum requirements to get into the IB world. Yes, I do have concerns about it, but again, at this point, um, I have no choice. Now, the cool thing I do like about IB is the ability that I can set up a demo account uh, and just play with their IB, their 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 uh, their their simulation, uh, and be able to do stuff um, without needing to fork over ten thousand um, dollars. And that's one of the other reasons why I mean I like IB MATLAB or that connector for MATLAB with IB, um, but I um, just uh, got, a, got a response that, yeah, you do need to register with IB. So again, that's not really an option. So there is some solutions out there. Um, I'm kind of concerned about the Interactive Brokers connector piece. Uh, there's two options. Obviously, use Interactive Brokers, the API itself and you get free access to that, you can play around with it, you can play with the C++ option that I'm looking at. And I'm doing some really bizarre um, a stop loss and then applying a, tra a trading loss, or trailing loss, sorry, a trailing stop. And that is where the complexities come into play with something like a trade link, or um, it's just, there's, there's a very limited amount of uh, software tools that can do that. But you can do it, from what I understand, with IB, IB's uh, API for, let's say, CPP, sorry, C++. So it can be done. And again, I'm not spending a nickel to take that risk to see if it works or not. <clears throat> so I'm okay with that. Um, and again, it's, it's all full control. And there's a ton of wrappers if i got to port that into C Sharp. Now, 
that's all the data and the uh, database and the execution or orders piece. And that's the most critical point. That's what uh, the quant from London said. It's what he calls a loop, closing that loop. And from there, you can now develop your strategies. So that's where I come into play with the strategies. The strategies I'm hoping to do either could build the logic in C Sharp, maybe, because it's simple, or I don't want to do C++, or my, my, my best option that I'm wanting to do is to do it in MATLAB itself, or Simulink with state flow, and with a state flow, you can, you can develop your own, uh, you have your stream uh, that you have your um, inbound, and then you uh, your inflow build visually in, in state flow your 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 logic with the visual events, and then you have your outcomes of those events, and then you can co-generate that within the Simulink model, co-generate it, and now you have an API, your own little equivalent of an API for a particular strategy, which means then you can. Uh, develop a DLL in C, in my case C, I don't like C++, it's too, too cumbersome with the object-oriented stuff, but we do it in C, develop a DLL, and then have my um, uh, C-sharp app talk to it, as well as the C-sharp app talk to the Mongo to get access to the data. Um, so that's what I'm looking at doing. Um, and then for the execution, using some kind of wrapper or some kind of connection into uh, into uh, uh, interactive brokers. Now, there's a, like I said, there's a few options there. Um, the one that I, I do like that I see and I verified it seems to work out, I just watched my own video from uh, in January of this year called TWS Link 2 that will link you into TWS. Um, uh, using the, the trade trader workstation client for interactive brokers, which is more, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Help me out here. It, it's more robust than using something like the IB gateway, which is in fix. And then what, what's happening there is if you do go the fix option, you have to pay a uh, $500 setup fee and a hundred dollars a month. Not doable. Um, I just find the TWS just more appealing, at least at this point. So that's how I'm planning to architect it. Um, and uh, it's kind of wonky by the sounds of it. Um, but uh, I'm looking at Mongo and all this stuff right now to see if it's doable. Um, and uh, see if I can get something working with this proprietary strategy I'm working on right now. And then at the same time, being able to develop another one in a Simulink state flow MATLAB, and then generate a new DLL for that puppy, and drop that into this system, I guess, and see what happens. Now remember, um, Mongo uh, is just, uh, the, this, the, the Java piece from IQ Feed is consistently uh, uh, dumping or streaming everything into Mongo. So everything else from there on the uh, query end is going to be done in .NET, C Sharp, uh, C++ would be back end for accessing the IB C++ API or using the TWS um, link to one or the other or maybe something else I don't know but that's what I'm looking at um, it's just I've now you could say officially given up on all these other platforms and other stuff I just gotta include my own I guess Whew. Hopefully I'll help you out. Uh, sorry to confuse anybody. It's just part of the software evolution. Later.